This is how women view us. They're not going to give you the box unless you pay nowadays. They flip the script on us. All right. So guess what? We took their playbook. We ran the cheat codes back. You know, we jailbroke their phone and we got the plays and we're putting it in reverse. And now the bunny has the gun. Don't feel so good now, ladies, does it? The bunny got the gun. The bunny pointing the gun at you. But he'll never tell you. He'll just be watching videos like this on the internet. What's up guys, in today's video we're talking about why most men struggle with dating. I'm not only going to be telling you why most men struggle with dating and it's not for reasons you probably think it is, I'm going to be giving you advice as well at the end of this video. We are about solutions here on this channel. We are about improving men's lives so that we can get the outcome and the best results that we want in our lives being men. So no further ado, I'm illust I've illustrated a concept on this board and I'll break it down for you guys so you can understand female nature and how women choose men and why that affects most men in today's society and what you can do about this in order to get the best results with women if you choose to date. So you have to understand when it comes to choosing a man, women will usually have two types of men in their life, okay? It usually is a man that embodies the characteristics of a lover or a man that embodies the characteristics of a provider. And I've illustrated it as red as a lover, blue as a provider. Now, what are, the, what are some of the qualities and the characteristics of the lover? The lover is the fun guy, okay? Think of Jack from the Titanic. He's fun, he's adventurous, he takes risks, he's outgoing, you know, he doesn't really care about what happens next. He's just always in the moment trying to make a good time out of a situation that, you know, most people that are boring and we'll talk about on this side, the provider, would not find necessarily exciting or fun, all right? He cultivates a level of excitement for those people he's around and he doesn't care if other people find it exciting. He's going to do it regardless because he's in love with himself and the experiences he creates, which and then attracts women especially and other people around him. So he's a very sociable, fun individual. Whereas on the other side, the provider is the boring guy. You know, he's a homebody usually. There's nothing wrong with that, but he's more of a stay at home type of guy. He doesn't like taking risks. He doesn't like going on adventures. He's not very spontaneous. And we'll talk about it later, but he's very predictable. Another characteristic the lover embodies is he only provides the pipe. He comes through, he smashes, and then he's done. And he chooses, after he's done smashing, to either deal with that situation or keep it moving, keep it pushing after. The lover is here to drop the meat and then retreat. Unlike the provider who, you know, he provides resources, he provides money, he provides that security blanket, okay? He's the type of guy that leads with his wallet. He's the type of guy that takes women out on expensive dinner dates, their first date, and shows up with roses and feels like he can buy a woman's love. And the way to a woman's heart is through resources and material items and possessions and status. That's what he truly believes a woman loves and desires. And he believes a woman loves and desires that more than a guy that just provides really good pipe. The next quality and characteristic the lover embodies is he has complete satisfaction in himself. He doesn't look for satisfaction in other people and especially not women. He is okay being a lone wolf, being by himself and working towards his craft on his own. And if people choose to come around him and deal with him and be around him while he's working towards hit building his kingdom, he's okay with that. But if people do not choose to be around him, women don't check for him while he's building, while he's on his grind, while he's on his purpose, he's completely fine with that as well. Unlike on the other side with the provider over here, he gets satisfaction from pleasing women. He's gonna be munching on the box, just going in, going crazy, looking at her face while he's eating it, and, and just praying that she's feeling pleased and satisfied because he gets a sense of satisfaction based on how the woman feels about him performing in front of him. He's a good little boy. He's a good doggy because he performed well and he took care of me. He kisses my feet, sucks my toes at night. He's a good little beta male simp provider. That is what a beta male provider gets his satisfaction from. It's from pleasing a woman and kowtowing to her needs. That's what he believes a woman wants. The next quality of the lover is he's unpredictable. You never know whether he's coming or whether he's going. You never know what his next move will be. He's very all over the place, but he's having fun while doing it 
and he's in control while it may seem that he's out of control from people around him. And he's not necessarily led by a set schedule. He moves to the beat of his own drum. He doesn't move to the beat of how he's feeling in that moment or the emotions of other people, how it make, might make other people feel. That's what the provider does. The provider is not mysterious and he is very predictable. He will oftentimes have set dinner dates within the week, say on Fridays, he always takes his wife out to the steakhouse or the sushi place. It's always a predictable series of events. There's no mystery in what he's doing. It can be mapped out months in advance that he's going to always take this woman out to the same restaurant at this time during this day of the week for the rest of his life. The next quality that the lover embodies is he never compromises manhood, especially not for any woman that he perceives as extremely attractive or gorgeous or a 10 out of 10 or a dime piece. It doesn't matter to this man. He himself actually views him as a dime piece and he believes he should be catered to and he should be the one that should be receiving gifts and attention, not the other way around with the woman receiving attention. Whereas the provider, you know, he compromises his manhood for the possibility of sex, of box. Shout out Alan Roger Curry for that book and that term. He compromises his manhood just to get a little taste, a little sniff of her panties, just a little taste of it. Because in his mind, in the provider's mind, the woman's box is worth more than he is as is, as just a man. He pedestalizes women and he's willing to throw away his friends, his family, his goals, his purpose, just to get the opportunity to possibly sleep with the woman. The next characteristic of the lover is he is not controlling, but he is in control. He's not obsessed with what his woman or the women he's dealing with are doing outside of him because he understands women are women. He understands female nature already. So why is he concerning himself with what a woman's going to do when he already knows what she's going to do. And it doesn't matter what she's going to do, and this is the mindset I'm trying to get you guys to get to, because he is the best option she will ever run into. You have to have that irrational self-confidence, guys. That is the main reason I make videos like this. This is the guy I want you guys to be, okay? He's not controlling over her, but he's in control of the situation he puts himself in. So he's not all over the place. He's not letting his emotions lead him. He himself knows exactly what his next move will be while he has fun. On the other hand, the provider is controlling, yet he's not in control. He's led by his emotions. He has that feminine mindset of being emotions based and emotions driven. And he's always trying to control the woman that doesn't want to be controlled, that doesn't love him, that doesn't like him, actually detests him and is messing around with the lover. He's trying to control a situation and contain a bird that wants to be free. And the lover allows that woman or his women to be free. He's so out of control. He's taking his girl's phone, doing phone checks, looking through her Snapchat, like going crazy. When in the first place, he should have nipped it in the bud from the beginning and said, listen, I have this set of rules and expectations if I'm dealing with you. And if you can't apply those rules and you can't abide by them, then this situation ends and we will not be together. We will not be in a relationship. He waits too long to try to initiate some sort of boundaries and some sort of rules and put some standards on the way he wants a relationship to operate. He lets it build up inside him like constipation. He's just, oh, he's triggered, he's triggered. So when he gets her phone, he gets his phone. He, this is the type of dude that will go into a house, knock down the door and shoot everyone in the house blow his brains out because he's not in control. He lets it build up inside him like a psychopath because he's emotionally driven, emotionally based. And instead of communicating from the beginning what he really likes, he waits, lets it fester. And that's when the craziness comes out because he is not in control of his own emotions, just like a woman. The lover gets sex for free, completely for free. In fact, like I was talking about earlier, the lover has such an irrational self-confidence, and a lot of you guys will get to this point, where he believes a woman should be paying for his time and for his pipe. The woman should be paying for his pipe. That's what he believes. He's so irrationally self-confident, and I don't even think it's irrational self-confidence. You know, this is the right mindset we need to have. This is how women view us. 
This is how women view us. They're not gonna give you the box unless you pay nowadays. They flipped the script on us, all right? So guess what? We took their playbook, we ran the cheat codes back, you know, we jailbroke their phone, and we got the plays and we're putting it in reverse, and now the bunny has the gun. Don't feel so good now, ladies, does it? The bunny got the gun, the bunny pointing the gun at you. But he'll never tell you. He'll just be watching videos like this on the internet, getting hella knowledge, getting hella game on the internet for free building up his repertoire and he'll eventually be charging you for his time because he realizes how rare of a man this is especially nowadays so he's gonna charge you for it he's gonna charge you for it. especially if you respect yourself he's gonna charge you for it oh yeah oh yeah we're charging top dollar nowadays deal with it we're rare and we flip the script on you guys because we understand how that goes we understand you don't like this guy, the provider. We understand that. Because just like the lover gets sex for free, the provider, he has to buy gifts, trips, in order to get sex. He has to buy all, he has to buy it all. He has to buy her love. He thinks that's the way to her heart. He truly believes that a woman is more satisfied with material possessions and what he can offer her financially than good pipe and because he has this mindset he'll keep giving you gifts take it from me take my gifts every valentine's day every anniversary every new year's take my gift or every time i make a mistake every time you get mad at me take my gift from me and please 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 give me the box give me the box later tonight or later this year at some point because i never get it that's his mindset he adds what he truly believes. The reason most men struggle with dating is because they are providers. They believe buying gifts, buying trinkets, buying presents for a woman taking her on expensive vacations will buy her love and that is the way to her heart because their single mother told him that or they were raised seeing that in movies and in Disney. My goal for you guys is to be on the side of the lover. In an ideal world, a woman would like to have a combination of both the lover and the provider into one guy. Now, if she can't find a guy that embodies both the lover and the provider in one, as I've illustrated here, what she will do is date a man that embodies either qualities of the lover or the provider and cheat on him with one from the other that she's lacking. So if she's dating, let's say a provider, for instance, she will have a lover on the side that's giving her a good pipe, that's giving her an exciting time, and that's being that alpha male in her life that's dominating her and that is sexually appealing and attractive. Now, what can we do as men about this and how can we improve our dating strategies as men? Because on this channel, I'm giving you guys solutions so that we can not just ramble about women, but we can work towards something. The best advice I can give you guys in order to not get put into the category of a provider in a woman's mind is you must become sexually desirable and lead with that first and foremost when first interacting with a woman. Now, how do you get to this point? This is a quick tip I'm gonna give you guys. You have to off rip immediately, get very sexual with her and see how she responds to that. If she's standoffish, she pulls back and she's not compliant, then you know that she views you as a provider because in the reverse, if that was her favorite celebrity like Drake or you know Chris Brown, someone like that, she's going to hop in the sack with that guy immediately because you know she views him as a lover and probably a provider, but more so a lover and she's not going to wait to jump in bed because she's interested in that guy and making sure she gets that guy so she's willing to put out and give to that guy what he wants in order to build that relationship with that guy and please him so how do you get a woman to see you as sexually desirable first so she can put you in the category of the lover and not the provider what you have to do is you have to be the guy that gets her wet and the wettest okay you have to have the sexual charisma the personality mouthpiece muscles that turn her on that get her feeling you she has to envision yourself on top of her destroying her going crazy digging her out till she busts okay that's the type of guy that she has to envision you as whenever she sees you you have to embody that dreamy alpha male 50 shades of gray type of guy that gets her just drippy okay and then after this in addition to this when she goes out with you, when you go places, there has to be other women checking for you. She has to almost feel a sense of insecurity around you. 
that like other women are checking for this guy so he must have something going on for himself uh, let me find out what he has going on for himself let me keep this guy let me be willing to do anything to maintain a guy like this because i understand he is pre-selected by other women which makes women more attracted to you as a man because women you know they don't look towards what makes them happy they look towards what other women like but none of what i just said matters if you don't lead the relationship first and foremost on a sexual note and you don't get straight to finding out whether or not she views you as a provider or a lover you need to be able to quickly eliminate women that are wasting your time because 99 percent of women are out there just to waste your time and to toy and string you along and see how much they can get out of you before cutting the possibility of intimacy out of your life for good so you have to be able to cut that nip that in the bud off rip and show yourself as a sexual des sexually desirable man first and foremost and lead with that how do you do that you eat clean you work out you take care of your hygiene all these different things that play a role in how you look and your appearance you you start feeling better about yourself you work on your mind you, you travel you get those experiences in you become the fun adventuresome guy and this is why most men struggle with dating they're the provider they lead with their wallet they provide resources they're boring they're predictable you can tell what his next move is going to be because he's done it a million times before he's not fun he's not exciting he doesn't get her watery down there he doesn't get her drippy he, she's not daydreaming about him when she's on she's at work and she's waiting to get off the clock just to run into his arms in the parking lot she know he's a boring predictable guy this is what most guys are i'm trying to get you guys to be the lover on this side and if you want a long-term relationship and you want the most women ideally it's probably going to be a combination of these two together in both the lover and the provider but more so still leaning towards the lover so i'll leave you on this note do you want to be the lover that's constantly worried about what your woman's doing her disrespect you feeling like you have to buy her her love and the only way to her heart is through providing financially or through resources or would you rather be the lover on this side provides the pipe is emotionally detached comes and go as as he pleases does whatever he wants to do on his set schedule is unpredictable you know wakes up putting himself first you have to remember guys girls just want to have fun so especially in their prime you want to be the lover you want to be the guy that provides that excitement that provides that fun you want to let her get loose and be a girl you know a lot of girls don't want to grow up and have to go to jobs and work and have put on this corporate hat and live up to this expectation that their mothers their families placed on them to graduate to be this uppity uptight bachelor degree master degree doctorate degree having uppity uptight females that are climbing the corporate ladder and don't experience fun well they're looking for that fun guys so it's up to you to decide what you want to be a part of what side do you want to be a part of this is what most men struggle with but at the end of the day you're going to make that decision you can either choose to be a lover or a provider i've laid out why i believe you should be a lover and the benefits that come with that and why i think all men should lean towards being a lover over a provider the choice is up to you look around at your family members in your life and decide are they lovers are they providers how do their women treat them how are their lives turning out to be so hopefully you were able to take away valuable information from this video if you did please drop a like and support the channel hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications for more uploads and i'll see you guys next time have a blessed rest of your day and continue being an excellent man on your purpose and on your mission and i'll see you guys 